I said this in the last video, I will say this here as well. The footage you are about to see is not mine at all, and I am not going to take any credit for it. All credit belongs to 8-Bit HD on YouTube. You can go find the official, actual, full walkthrough of the entire Plants vs. Zombies game, and you should watch it, because it's their video. I'm just using it because I really don't feel like recording six plus hours worth of gameplay just for maybe 10 to 20 minutes worth, especially since the sins are of specific parts of the game that I don't need the excess for. That's basically like slaughtering the whole pig just because you only need the nose. So yeah, credit goes to 8-Bit HD. And with that being said, let's get on to the video. Game chooses to show a shot of the pool world, therefore spoiling a lot of shit we'll get to see and use later. Assholes. Whoever is playing here is doing absolutely nothing about this all-star who's about to ravage their torchwood. Of all the houses to raid, the zombies choose mine? Wait, so we're placing seed packets? Not the actual plants. So how do they come out as fully grown plants? This is some magic shit if you ask me. I know zombies are pretty decrepit and weak, but a whole ass pea is enough to knock limbs off and kill them? Really? These pea shooters have to be the size of my desk for that to be the case. This random narrationless text on the screen sure is convenient, huh? Who the hell owns three lawnmowers? You'd think if this person saw frickin' zombies try and get in their house the day before, Crazy Dave would've put up a fence or a gate or something to try and stop them. Hell, get an electric fence and you'll be fine until either Zombonis, Gargantuars, or Zomboss arrives. It sure is convenient that these zombies can only walk in straight lines. How is the cone staying on his head? Better yet, how is it even being damaged at all by the pea shooters? The bomb I understand, but peas would just bounce off of it. <laughs> Sure is nice that the speech bubble is here, otherwise I would have zero idea what he's saying. Wait, you mean to tell me this guy didn't have a shovel until now? <laughs> Roll credits. Wait, hold on, my phone's ringing. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, talk to you later. Bye. Yeah, sorry, physics just called me and wanted me to let you know he's leaving. Oh great, they explode too. So the zombies are smart enough to utilize a pole vaulting stick and know what to do with them, yet die to some peas. Okay then. Hey, Snow Pea, you know everything that makes you cool? No pun intended. Well, Torchwood's gonna end up being a better choice later, and Wintermelon's gonna put you out of a job even farther down the road. Have fun! I'll take plants that should be way better than they are for 500, Alex. Nice. Only nine levels into the game and Pea Shooter has already become obsolete. Nice. Wait, they can write legible handwriting too? These are the same zombies, right? Mysterious and convenient conveyor belt is mysterious and convenient. <laughs> Yeah, I won't get any sun falling from the sky anymore. I don't even know how that was happening to begin with, but game. Damn, those graves appeared fast. Also, how would you even get rid of those? I would guess there's laws related to that, but what do I know? Okay, the newspaper zombie has enough intellect to get angrier when his newspaper is gone. Yet, again, they wouldn't bother to just try another house. Wait, an extra seed slot is $750? What? A typical packet of seeds at Menards is like four bucks. Talk about ripoff, Jesus. I'm actually going to take a sin off here for the first game actually making Sunshroom feel important without forcing it on the player. In the second game, there's 30 million other ways to get Sun, most if not all of them far better. So kudos to the first game for actually making me want to use Sunshroom. At most, these fumes would cause a minor inconvenience, not full-on physical damage. But game. Okay, either this door is incredibly small, or this zombie is fucking huge. Just saying, if you truly want to be impervious to damage, get a normal metal door. You're already a zombie carrying a screen door, it wouldn't be far-fetched if you carried a normal one. I mean, a pen and paper can do the job just as easily, but okay. Okay, I googled if a squirbo is an actual thing, and turns out it is. 
It's either an insult or a small group of rodents, like you'd expect and like the game says. I still have to send the absurdity of whacking a bunch of zombies with a mallet, though. I'm not even going to question it. Well, it was nice of Tom Brady to pay us a visit after his career died. The Disco Zombie. Easily the biggest joke of a zombie in this entire game. His gimmick makes you think he'd be threatening, but a mix of plants like Fume Shroom and the fact that he's so weak basically kills any chance he'll have of killing you. This easily is one of the most questionable plants in the whole game, especially the more you think about him. It's basically a nuke, which you'd think would prompt somebody to investigate, whether it be the FBI or just your neighbor. Added to the fact that despite being a nuke, it doesn't damage the graves or plants around it, it only makes a small crater in the ground that heals no less, and it basically makes every single zombie you've encountered thus far look like pansies. You know what? Fuck it. Five sins added. I don't know, man. The ice cream and brains combo only really works as a lunch dish. Hit me up tomorrow afternoon, then sure. Is it sad that if you removed only the instas, then this level would be a decent bit harder? Yet another example of inconsistent intelligence. Can use a floaty, neglects trying a less difficult house. Yet another plant that makes super tough zombies into total jokes. No wonder this game is regarded as being easy as hell. Sorry, the price alone kills this for me. Smart enough to figure out scuba gear, too stupid to... you know what, you get it. It sure is lucky that none of these plans can look down, otherwise the scuba zombie as a whole would be toast. How the hell did a random zombie get a hold of Crazy Dave's car key? You already know what I'm gonna say. As I said before, ladies and gentlemen, now there is absolutely zero reason to use Snowpea. Add him to the list of obsolete plants, right next to Pea Shooter. Is... Is that a motherfucking dolphin? Unlocking the Torchwood for this level suggests the game is implying you to take the DPS overload so the Dolphin Rider dies before he can jump root, which, for someone who's at this stage of the game, would be incredibly inconvenient, especially when you can either bait him to waste his jump or just use Tangle Kill. Game introduces a counter to pole vaulting zombies two worlds too late. Yes, I know it's meant for the Dolphin Riders, but level 3, 9, has pole vaulters, which is why I'm even making this point. Exactly how many notes are these zombies gonna write to me? This is like when I kept writing notes to my crush in middle and high school, except far less cringy and far less desperate. Also, should have mentioned this earlier, but even for a bunch of zombies, misspelling heard but spelling sincerely correctly is sinful. Game introduces you to the only strategy you will ever need for the rest of the game, pea plant spam behind a wall of torchwoods. Wait, the jack-in-the-box zombie's wearing a straight jacket. Never mind the fact that it isn't on properly, that would mean he'd have to be wearing it when he died. I doubt anyone put it on him after the fact. Look, All-Star is here. Because why again? We don't have Magnet Room yet, so he kinda just is here as filler. Behold, a plant you will use at most twice, then never again once you unlock Blover. How in the ever-loving hell did a zombie have a taco on them? And an edible one, no less? <laughs> We did not get a say in this at all. Smart enough to use a pickaxe. You finish the line. Despite being introduced as the main defense to digger zombies, digger with a D comment section, split P often sucks and will usually fail to kill the diggers in time to save your back line. Pumpkin is introduced in the same level as pogo zombies. As if pumpkin is gonna fucking do anything. Also smart enough to use a pogo stick. Finish the line. Dark as balls, can still see Crazy Day fine for gameplay sake. Game gets all Five Nights at Freddy's on me for a second and expects me not to notice. Well, this game did come out five years before FNAF, so maybe that was a prediction. Why put Cactus and Blover in this level if Blover becomes pointless when you have a full column of Cacti, and Cactus becomes useless if you don't? The angled roof is sadly one of the more realistic parts of this game. Also, how exactly are they getting up here? Unless they can climb, I didn't see a ladder or other conceivable method of getting on the roof. Where exactly is the bungee zombie's cord attaching itself to? Oh, so that's what happened to that guy I called to come fix my roof. Bastard. Seems a bit BS that you have all these plants, yet had no watering can. Wait a minute. So they do have to grow first. Then why the hell do the ones you use in battle not have to? A whoop a dee doo also, smart enough to drive and use a catapult. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, these were the days that the Gargantuar was a legitimate threat. 
long before the days in PvZ2 when a leveled up squash could kill several gargantuars, or before Heathseeker existed. Still, the absolutely massive lad will still go down from one or two instas, and can even be DPS killed a decent bit of the time anyway. Behold, the only thing you will be using for this last level, and most likely the only thing you will ever use in any roof level ever from now on. Okay, this is pushing it, even for a smartass zombie. Rightful claim? The fuck are you talking about? You ain't got no claim to my brains, bro. How is my roof supporting the weight of this giant ass robot? Five cents off for the music alone. Video game trope number four, to defeat a boss, wait until his weak point is exposed, then open fire on said weak point till he dies.